Hey Canucks fans, the Canucks have had one more home game postponed, and let's look at the top stories of 2021. I'm Canuck Clay, I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club. This is my Canucks take all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Friday, December the 31st. If you're new, here's what you should do. Hit the subscribe button now for daily Canucks insight that's positive, timely, and trustworthy. As always, this vlog is brought to you by Perform and Transform, personal training and weight loss. Sign up now for a free seven-day trial. Use the link in my video description. And by Van City Experts Real Estate Group. Contact Jason Lim and his team for all of your real estate needs. Now, I want to thank you. I went over the 8,500 subscriber mark last night. Exactly one day ahead of schedule. I wanted to get there by the end of 2021. And you guys have helped me get there. So thank you. You guys know that. I do not take you for granted. And I think we have the best Canucks community here on YouTube. Right here on this channel. So thank you once again. Before I look at the top five Canucks stories of the year, uh, really quick news from this morning. The NHL announcing a, a bunch more postponements postponements of games to be held in Canada. And it's weird. Of the two Canucks games coming up, January 5th against the Islanders, January 8th against Ottawa, they've only postponed the January 5th one. So the Canucks will not be playing, will not be hosting the Islanders on Wednesday night, January the 5th. Make that the sixth cancellation of the season, or sorry, sixth postponement of the season five before Christmas, as we know. And then now this one makes number six. It's kind of strange that um, they left the Ottawa game on the slate, though, for January 8th. Maybe we'll get an announcement further in uh, in the new year. It's just strange because the NHL announced postponements of other games that are later than January 8th, but they left the Vancouver Ottawa one. Ottawa one. At first, I thought it was an oversight by the NHL because even the Canucks retweeted that tweet and actually said news about January 5th and January 8th, but then they deleted that tweet because apparently it's only about January 5th. Regardless... Only the January 5th Islanders game postponed for now. January 8th hosting Ottawa still on for now. Okay, friends, it's the end of the year. I want to talk about the what I think were the five biggest stories for the Canucks. And in your comments, in the comments below, I want you to agree with me, disagree with me, or if I missed any, I want you to put those in the comments as well. So in no particular order, but I kind of put them in order just so I can organize my thoughts. The first two are related for sure. The first, the biggest news I think of 2021 when it came to the Canucks was the firing of head coach Travis Green and the firing of general manager Jim Benning. Travis Green was in, I think it was fourth or fifth season. I'm just thinking uh, Tortorella got to the end of 14. Then Willie D was 15, 16, 17. And then Green was 18, 19, 20, 21. Yeah, so I guess Green was in his fourth, no, fifth season as the Vancouver Canucks head coach. And he just got a new contract extension in the summer. Uh, and after the Canucks seem to be left him twisting in the wind in the summer, but he gets his new contract, uh, two-year contract, and then he is swiftly fired on December the 6th, which was a Sunday, the day, or December 5th. It was basically the day after the Canucks lost to the Pittsburgh Penguins. So Travis Green gets fired in his fifth season, and then Jim Benning, general manager, gets fired in his eighth season. The Canucks only made the playoffs twice in those eight seasons, once in 23, uh, no, 2014, 2015, Willie D's first year, and then in the bubble, of course, in the, the summer of 2020. Now, uh, we don't have to rehash all the reasons why they were fired, but the one commentary I will say, it's interesting. I You guys know that I always like Green more than Benning. I thought that Green uh, would have stayed even if Benning got fired. But now, with the way the team has, has switched with the new head coach and new uh, you know new president which I'll get to in a second it's like Benning the team that Benning put together is actually pretty good under Bruce Boudreau so maybe that would you say that Green was more at fault than Benning it's not about assigning blame or assigning fault all I'm saying is I'm recognizing now that maybe the roster that Benning put together is actually pretty good and it just took a different voice a new coach to get the best out of the players so number one biggest story for me the firings of Travis Green and Jim Benning Related, the second biggest story for me was the hiring of Bruce Boudreaux as head coach and Jim Rutherford as president of hockey operations. We know what Boudreaux's been doing. I've been talking about it for the past month. He's taken the team to points in eight straight games, seven wins, and then last night's shootout loss. So that's, yeah, that's that's crazy. That's 15 points in 16 games, points in eight straight games, including a seven-game winning streak, tying Boudreaux with two other coaches for the best start ever to uh, a tenure with a new team. So pretty cool. 
pretty cool there. So we already, I've been talking about how well Bruce Boudreau has been doing with the Canucks, getting them to play a more aggressive, assertive, offensive type style, despite what we saw last night. Part and parcel of that, naming of a new president of hockey operations, Jim Rutherford, comes with uh, experience as a GM, winning three cups, one in Carolina, two in Pittsburgh. He's still rounding out his his team. We have Stan Smeal as his assistant, vice president of hockey ops. We have Derek Clancy as one of the assistant GMs. Still going to, uh, Sidin still as as special advisors, but they're going to, the biggest hire they still have to do in the front office is as the bona fide general manager. So second biggest story for me, is Boudreaux and Rutherford coming in. The third biggest story for me is COVID. It's COVID. It basically wreaked havoc on the Canucks and the entire league back in the spring, and it's doing so right now. Canucks were the most affected team back in the 2021 season. It was, you know, it's supposed to be a 2020, 2021 season, but they did everything from January to, to June, basically, or January to July, whenever the season ended. But what happened was the Canucks were the hardest hit team, not just in the NHL, but in all of professional sports. And they had five games postponed at the end of March and the start of April. They had to tack those games on to the end of the season. It was weird because they're out of a playoff position. They were playing games while the playoffs had already started for the rest of the league. So not only did the Canucks get ravaged by COVID earlier in the year at the end of March, start of April. Now, not as bad, thankfully, but the Canucks have still had six games postponed because of COVID. As I mentioned earlier, five before Christmas and then the one coming up on January 5th. So that means in in the span of 10 months, the Canucks will have had at least 11 games postponed by COVID. So I think that, that just tells you how big of a story it was and all the offshoots that came from that. The, the lack of communication within the team, how players were getting sick, how um, they might or they may or may not have felt supported, how Brandon Sutter is still feeling the effects of long haul COVID. So I think you'd agree with me that's a very big, a top five story for the year. My fourth biggest story was the big trade that happened in July. And that was the trade that brought Oliver Ekman Larson and Connor Garland from the Arizona Coyotes to the Canucks in exchange for Beagle, Roussel, Erickson, and three draft picks. The 2021 ninth overall pick, the 2022 second round pick, and the 2023 seventh round pick. Yes, that was a lot to give up. The This year's pick it turned out to be Dylan Gunther. Then you had uh, you know next year's second rounder, and then 2023's seventh rounder, plus three players that were made in the last year of their contract, making a total of 12 million. Coming back, Oliver Ekman Larson and his big contract still has six years left, including this year, at $8.25 million. The Coyotes picked up 12% of that, so basically about a million. So the Canucks are on the hook for $7.25 million for this season, plus five more. And then Connor Garland, who they swiftly signed to a new five-year contract at four point nine, and that's looking like a steal. Egmont Larson's been fine. He hasn't been uh, as strong offensively as we may have hoped for, but defensively, leadership, he's been fine. Worth his contract pretty much so far. We'll see how that contract um, turns out four, five, six years down the road. But for now... This was a t- this was a chance to bring in a top four defenseman, a top six winger for three guys that weren't doing really much for the Vancouver Canucks. Now you can argue whether that was money well spent in terms of what Ekman Larson's going to be making seven point two five, Garland five. So basically the money's a wash twelve million for twelve million. Yet we have the much better players coming out of it. Yet we lose three draft picks um, in the future. Well, one this year and two going forward. So that to me was the fourth biggest story, but it was Benning's really all in move and it set the stage for what he wanted this team to look like for this season. And the fifth biggest story to me was new contracts for Quinn Hughes and Elias Pettersson. We know that they're represented by the same agency. It wasn't a holdout, but it was certainly um, a, a kind of tense negotiation or at least a drawn out one. And they both missed the training camp and some preseason Quinn Hughes winds up with a six-year contract worth $7.85 million. And the way he's playing, you could argue that contract is a steal and will be a steal. Uh, great work there. And then Pedersen, three years at 7.35. And he, you could argue, has not lived up to the contract yet. We're hoping that he, he re- returns to, to form as the old PD and pretty soon. So I'd say Hughes, that contract looks really good right now. PD's not so good, but it's still early. And it's at least it's only for three years, for better or for worse. Whether it's not that the Canucks are going to walk away from him, but maybe you can, if he doesn't perform well over the three years, it can be painful to watch, but it, it, at least you can renegotiate in three years, or he can 
play really well, and that 7.35 is going to look like a steal by the end of those three years. So we'll see what happens, but I think, uh, no, I'm not going to make you agree. To me, Pedersen and Hughes, their new contracts and the way they've kind of set the table for the rest of the contracts for the rest of the team, um, that was the fifth biggest story for me. So number one, the firings of Green and Benning. Number two, the hirings of Boudreaux and Rutherford. Number three, COVID. Number four, the trade for Ekman Larson and Garland. And number five, contracts for PD and Hughes. Honorable mentions, I won't spend too much time on these, but I'll just name them. Jake Vertanen, the allegations against him and the, the investigation, the signing of Jason Dickinson, the trading away of Holtby and Schmidt after just one year here. So those are a few, um, you know, the emergence of, of Pod Colson coming over. And I think those are some of the stories to me that were also uh, very important this season. But uh, if I was doing a top 10, they'd be in there, but they don't make my top five. So Canucks fans, let me know if you agree. With my top five, whatever order, or am I missing a few stories or am I giving too much uh, credence to some of the stories there? Let me know in the comments below. I love to read, react, and reply as always. Shout out for the last time this year to my members, legends, legendary Lucas Gates, legendary Justin Credible, legendary Andrew Chang, hero members, Nux fan number 29, and Carol Bovenlander, and Hall of Fame members, Jens95, Sim Alexander, Chris Seifert, Adam Broomfield, Shannon Hollingworth, and and HSM Fangirl Gaming. Thanks for your support as always, and thanks to the support of all members of all levels, including franchise and all-stars as well. You are listed in my video descriptions. If you want to become a member of the CCC crew, press the join button underneath this or in my videos on the memberships tab on my YouTube channel. Subscribe if you'd like to, like this video if you'd like to, become a member or upgrade if you like to, great way to end off the year, or leave a comment down below if you'd like to. Give me your top Canuck stories for the year 2021. My friends, whatever you're, however you're celebrating today, no matter who you're with, please stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves, and take care of each other, and celebrate responsibly. Thanks for everything this year. Looking forward to an even better and bigger 2022. I'll check with you tomorrow. God bless, and go Canucks go.